some events leave a deep mark on history, but none on the land. This is the site of the Battle of Hastings. After almost a thousand years, no traces of the bloody conflict can be seen. But here, the fate of England turned. It's where a king was killed and his victor claimed the throne. October 14th, 1066. We know what happened here on this day, thanks to this. The Bayer Tapestry. A carefully preserved illustrated record of events. It shows the main players. Harold, the newly crowned Anglo-Saxon King of England, and his challenger, William. Duke of Normandy. William claimed the previous king had promised him the crown. So, he assembled an army and prepared to sail to England to fight King Harold for the throne. But a storm thwarted his plans. Meanwhile, Harold discovered that a Viking invasion had landed in the north another threat to his crown. So he raced to fight them. In France, William waited for the right conditions to sail across the channel to England. The weather cleared. He seized his chance. Two hundred and fifty miles north, Harold had defeated the Vikings. Now, hearing of William's arrival, his army sped south. At nine o'clock in the morning, on this hill, William's Norman army were ready to do battle with Harold's Anglo-Saxon men. The stage was set, and up for grabs, England itself. On October 14, 1066, William of Normandy stood ready for battle at the base of a hill. The high ground belonged to King Harold of England and his Anglo-Saxon army. Here, on this hilltop, the fate of England would be decided. William's Norman army made the first charge launching a direct assault on the shield wall. Though William's army fought fiercely against the shield wall, it would not yield. As one man fell, another took his place. Overlapping shields in tight formation made for a near impenetrable barrier. Realizing his army could not break the shield wall, William called for a retreat. He aimed to lure the Anglo-Saxons into a false sense of victory, causing them to break formation. William's feigned retreat was working. 
the Anglo-Saxon army broke their shield wall formation, leaving gaps for William to make a move. With Harold's men no longer in shield wall formation, William could pick them off as they charged. More Norman men-at-arms reinforced William's army. The Anglo-Saxons had deployed rows of spearmen to push back the invaders. But William had an answer. His sharp-eyed archers. Additional Norman archers joined the battle. Anglo-Saxon archers joined the fray, and the Normans' deadly cavalry ready to charge. At first, William's forces had to eliminate the enemy spearmen, whose sturdy pole arms could easily bring down a horse. With the threat of spearmen cleared from the field, William's cavalry was free to charge at the Anglo-Saxon archers. More Norman cavalrymen took to the field. The Anglo-Saxon army was in disarray. Their shield wall had been neutralized and their numbers were dwindling. Now the only thing standing between William and victory was King Harold himself. The last of Harold's men encircled their king, prepared to lay down their lives to save his. The Anglo-Saxon King Harold had fallen. In the confusion, some loyal soldiers fought to the death while others scattered in panic. Leaderless and defeated, the last of the Anglo-Saxon army fled for their lives. The Normans celebrated victory over the English king, but William's quest to rule England was just beginning.